Welcome to EU Tweets of the Week. Me Too hashtag sparks harassment debate, Commission loses over glyphosate hate, and e-privacy vote opens lobby floodgate. Kickstarted by the Harvey Weinstein revelations, the Me Too hashtag gathered momentum with women from all walks of life. And of course, Brussels is not immune. The Sunday Times, Bojan Panchevsky and Politico's Ryan Heath both revealed troubling allegations in the EU institutions. The issue was debated at the European Parliament, where MEPs including Terry Reindke and Sophie Intveld condemned a culture of silence. Kira Bottomley pointed out that of the 40 speakers at the plenary debate, only five were men. She said it was disappointing and men must be part of the solution. James Crisp reported that, on average, the European Commission receives more than one allegation of sexual harassment every month. Burley Monster believes that it's too many middle-aged men, too far from home for too long, with too much money and too much ego. Cecilia Malmstrom said the Me Too testimonies are a powerful movement, a feminist outcry that women all over the world say enough. And that's a lot of women. The European Union Agency for Fundamental Rights said that 55% of women surveyed across the EU have suffered sexual harassment. Elsewhere, NGOs, Friends of the Earth and Greenpeace were delighted with the latest news on glyphosate when, as expected, the Commission failed to get the green light on 10-year approval. In Parliament, the Envy Committee went even further, calling for restrictions from 2018 and a full ban in 2022. Belgian PM Charles Michel agreed that phasing out is necessary and Aval says that one million EU citizens want a full ban but not quite everyone. Many farmers were against the move, with Jake Freestone saying that this is more carcinogenic and will be ingested by many tonight. The EU budget was also on the agenda and always attracts criticism, no matter what is agreed, but stating that a budget of 0.14% of GDP for EU programmes equals a European superstate is simply ridiculous, said Guy Verhofstadt. But the most controversial decision is to spend 12 million euros in 2018 on a trial for free interrail passes for 18-year-olds. Nathan Gill said young people don't need train tickets, they need jobs, but Siegfried Murison said it will strengthen EU identity. Here's an idea. Instead of putting MEPs on trains to Strasbourg every month, why not use that cash to pay for the scheme? Finally, approval for a Parliament mandate to negotiate the e-privacy regulation came right down to the wire. Although approved in Libe Committee last week, EPP and ECR groups tried to have the regulation opened up for more amendments. Anna Maria Carazza built encouraged colleagues to reject a mandate for trialogues, and lobbying reached fever pitch, with eagle-eyed reporter Lauren Cerulis identifying at least one troll account, and his MLEX counterpart Magnus Franklin spotting that the EPP website statement on e-privacy contains 12 trackers, corresponding S&D website contains just one. Even Commission Vice President Andrus Ansett felt he had to wade into the Twitter debate to clarify a lot of misunderstandings. E-privacy is not against media freedom, he said. But as confirmed by Ralph Bendrath, the Libe mandate was finally confirmed by plenary 318 to 220. So congratulations. This week we are supported by the European Parliament. To find out more about all our topics today, follow the hashtag ePlenary and join me again next Friday for more of the good, bad and ugly in the Brussels bubble and sending in your suggestions using the hashtag EUTweets.